Do you know the difference between lucid dreaming and reality shifting? Well, the chances are that you don't know the difference, and you maybe even think they're the same thing. Or maybe you think that lucid dreaming is, up, is one thing over here, completely disconnected from reality shifting. None of these are really true. There is an interconnection between reality shifting and lucid dreaming, which I'm going to explain in this video. I'm also going to share how you can easily tell the difference. So if you've been confused about this, it's nothing to worry about, you know, it happens to everyone. And they are two, I would say, similar experiences, but not quite the same. And before we get into this video properly, I want to set the record straight about something. On this channel and on this website, I have previously mentioned things that I now don't believe. For example, astral projection. I've in the past made, a, I think it was a few years ago now, maybe even four or five years ago, I made a video that said astral projection is not real. And I think I even mentioned in another video that I think astral projection is the same as, a, as lucid dreaming. This I now firmly believe is not the case. I've done so much more research since then. I've learned and studied so many different sources, books, you know, meta-analysis of studies, experiences, and all kinds of different bits of information from a huge range of different places. And I now firmly believe that this is not the case. There is so much overwhelming evidence and experiences and reports now to show that astral projection is a real, separate, and distinguishable state completely separate, but slightly related to lucid dreaming. They are different things. I was wrong about something else as well, and I'm willing to admit this. I don't think I made this very clear before. In fact, in previous videos, I've said that I think lucid dreaming is only in the mind, and it's a state that exists firmly within our mind, like a thought, for example. I now firmly believe this is not the case. And again, I've done lots of research into this, but it's not just me and my opinion and my research. When I do my research, I try and have what's called systems thinking, where I Instead of focusing in on one specific thing, one topic, author, one book, or even one subject, I try and go as broad as possible and get bits of information from as many different places as I can. And I feel like this is the more accurate way of doing it, because if you focus on one author or even one topic, it's a very narrow way of looking at things. So you might learn a lot about that particular thing, but you miss all of the other things that make up the big picture. And this is really important, especially with things like consciousness, which is such a complex and, I would say, new topic. Although, you know, we've been researching and writing about this for a long time, it's still fairly new. You know, there's still so much we don't know about consciousness. But from the advanced research I've done so far, and I'm willing to admit how much I don't know, I firmly believe that lucid dreaming is not just this petty, insignificant, meaningless thing that happens in our brains. Okay, and to give you a slight kind of hint at what I'm, where I'm going with this, they know that consciousness does not reside in the brain. You can't point to anywhere in the brain and say that's where your consciousness is. It just, it's never been done. All we can do is hypothesize that this part of the brain might be used for this thing, and this part might be used for this thing, but even that has been massively disproven. It's been widely disproven now, and a famous example of this was they took somebody who had you know, half of their brain basically removed, and they still had access to everything that they had before. All of their memories, all of their motor skills, all of their personality, and everything that they thought made up them, their consciousness, was still there, even when they took half the brain away. So, and there's, there's obviously several more examples like this. I would highly encourage you to read The Holographic Universe. It's a very interesting book I've wrote, um, I've written about the holographic theory of reality in other blog posts and things like that. But the fact is we know now that consciousness is not our brain. Our brain is just an organ. It's no more linked to consciousness than your arm, for example. And I know that might challenge a few of your beliefs, especially if you've been told growing up that your brain is in control of the whole body. That's not necessarily the case. It's certainly important, but it's not the definition of consciousness. So then to say that lucid dreaming only exists in the mind is fundamentally wrong if we also believe that consciousness is not limited to the mind. Consciousness is something which pervades and encompasses everything. It's all interconnected. Literally every particle at the quantum level is not separate from any other particle. They're all connected and interlinked. And if you look into, as I've done, if you look into quantum mechanics, uh, quantum entanglement, and if you zoom in far enough with an electron microscope, you will see that there is no separation between any one particle from any other particle. There's no, there's no difference there. It is literally all one of the same holographic entity, 
all dancing and entangling with each other at the same time. So if you take that as you know the, the foundation, there is almost no way that lucid dreaming is confined to your brain, especially now when you throw in on top of that all of the reports of shared dreaming, supposedly coincidences, right, where somebody, somebody will have a specific, really, really vivid dream about something with somebody, and then that same person will call them up the next day and say, did you just have a weird, a weird dream about me? And did this happen? And it's the same thing. It's very hard to explain that away by just saying it's a coincidence. Now, in terms of going back to quantum mechanics, just very briefly, the twin slit or the double slit experiment showed that your conscious attention, so what you focus your attention on, physically changes depending on whether you're focusing your attention on it or not. And if you want to look more into this, please Google the double slit experiment, and but more specifically look at people's interpretations of the double slit experiment, because it's really quite fascinating what it's saying. It's saying that your conscious attention, your thoughts, which remember, previously we and I even thought were contained within our brain, are absolutely not, that, that's absolutely not the case. They are not contained within our brain, and it's actually been shown through the double slit experiment that our thoughts have a physical effect on other particles that were supposedly outside of us, right, or external to us, when in reality, there's no separation at all. So that was a pretty long intro, okay? My point is, what I thought I knew before is now not what I believe. So I believe now that there's no separation, that the quantum research is just so vast now, and so almost undeniable, that I have to change my viewpoint on this. And I'm willing to publicly say that I was wrong before. And that uh, what I shared earlier on this channel, you know, it was a few years ago now, about how lucid dreaming is just purely in your mind and how astral projection is just, you know, nonsense or it's the same as lucid dreaming. I now retract those statements and I'm just setting the record straight now, especially as this channel grows. I want to make sure that I'm giving you the forefront, the cutting edge of what I know and the research that I'm summarizing and going through. So lucid dreaming and really dreaming in general is not just this thing that happens in our mind. It's actually some form or some type of experience that connects you with something else, whether it's a higher plane, a higher dimension, different entities, it really can be all or none of the above. It really does vary massively. So it's not something which just exists in your mind, it's rather a state of consciousness. And remember, consciousness is not confined to our mind. So when you're lucid dreaming, in exactly the same way as when you're awake, your although your consciousness when you're awake seems to feel like it's here in your body, in your mind, it's actually not there at all. It's all around you. You know, there's no, you can't point to somewhere and say, this is where my consciousness ends. Because it really does, and we can get philosophical with this, you know, that's probably an, another topic for another time. But my point is that your waking consciousness is not separate to anything. So therefore your lucid dreaming consciousness is simply another state of consciousness. However, it's not a lower state. And this is another way I was wrong before. It's not something which, you know, is just a dumb, low down, low energy, brain dead state. You're actually becoming more conscious as you dream, as you lucid dream. And then after that, as you astral project, and I have another video talking about the different layers above lucid dreaming. You don't become less conscious when you lucid dream, you become more conscious. Because you're less, you're less attached to the limiting, dense, physical, I guess you could say complex that makes up your body and mind, which is very limiting and it holds your consciousness down in a low third density plane. Okay, so when you lucid dream, you are free from that. You are free from those limits. And that's why, at least to some degree, you can do incredible things in lucid dreams because you're not limited by this ego, this programmed, you know, limited, restricted physical body. Your mind is set free or really your consciousness is set free to a, to the next level. Now, it's not the most free you can be. It's certainly not the most power and the most connection or um, what I want to say here. It's not really the highest you can go with your consciousness, but it's definitely one step above waking life consciousness. So going back to shifting, you know, shifting really is just moving your uh, your attention, your awareness from one point of attention in the multiverse, basically, to another point of attention. In exactly the same way that if you start right now telling yourself a different story about something, 
You know, let's say if you're always late for something, you're always late for your appointments. From this moment on, if you start saying, I am never late or I'm always on time, you've shifted in a way. And it's a small, you know, kind of meaningful, meaningless example, but you have in a way shifted your reality in that moment at a very basic level because of the stories you tell yourself, you've suddenly changed. So shifting really is just about that. You know, it's about shifting your, your conscious attention. And there's so many different techniques that explain how to do this, different ways of visualizing, different methods and steps that really just help you shift your attention. Because it's something that's quite difficult to do for beginners, is to shift your attention from not just one idea or one thing, but from one entire reality, everything that makes up your reality, to shift your attention from that to something else, to something you desire. I mean, it's literally called like your desired reality. To shift to your desired reality, it's not, you know, an easy thing. It's not, I mean, it can be easy, but it's not, it's not a small task that you're doing. You're shifting your entire attention from what you, one, you know, reality that you thought was everything you knew to an entirely different one. It can be difficult. So if you're struggling with that, if you're struggling to shift or you are new to this, I would really suggest that you start with lucid dreaming simply because it's easier. It's easier to learn the techniques, it's easier to quickly get results, and it's something there's a lot of information about. Shifting really is quite a new concept, at least for the Western world and for most people today, to grasp. It's a new concept. Although people have been doing this for a long time, lucid dreaming seems to be easier for beginners to learn. So if you do want to get started with lucid dreaming, I have many videos on my YouTube channel. You can look at my lucid breakthrough program. You can go and sign up to my email list. You'll get free email tips, lessons, and I think I even will send you a free PDF at the time of recording this. So go and check that out. If not, I would love to hear what you think. So leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time.